Greetings, everyone. This is Clothes from Heaven number five. What about us? Finding our mission on earth is what we are created for. Only you can do what the Lord has called you to do. And if you don't find your call, that part will remain undone in the world. Yes, what about us? I'm not good enough, many say. I look back on my own life. I struggled at school because I went through a terrible operation, a class having my appendix out when I was eight years old. This meant I couldn't run or do any sport for over two years. That's a long time for a child growing up. And it made me feel I was not good enough for anything. After this, I had a chance to learn horse riding. And because the horse does most of the work, my stomach was able to handle it. Well, I put my heart into learning and practicing what I'd been taught and actually came into the winner lineups at local horse shows. This led me to do horsemanship exams and to my delight I passed them and these victories gave me my life work of becoming a riding teacher, which I still do to this very day. What am I saying here? You become what you think and practice. If you seek the kingdom and the king of the kingdom, Jesus Christ, he will change you from within. As you submit every area of your life on this earthly kingdom to him, he will give you his grace and the power of the Holy Spirit to help you become more like Jesus. Godly characters more important to God than what we could ever imagine. Think and practice righteousness. Set your heart to live in him and he will become your home. If you set your heart to serve him, you will find your ministry. This is what I did and you can do it as well. You do not need talent or anything else. Simply a desire to love and serve your creator and to practice this in your everyday life. God will do the rest. Luke 22, 28 to 30. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials. And I assign to you, as my Father has assigned to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Jesus has given us his kingdom to live in, as well as to share or preach to others. But somehow, so many of us seem to have missed his call. Somehow we are spiritually asleep and not aware of this great calling all our lives. We don't seem to appreciate our great privilege or responsibility of being able to live in the heavenly realm and to extend the kingdom of God in our own neighborhood or beyond. We need to wake up from being spiritually asleep and go out in obedience to God's call. This is very important. Matthew 24, 14 says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, and to all nations, and then shall the end come. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, who flows through us from the heavenly kingdom with miracles and healing. How did Jesus preach? Jesus preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 4.17 From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then Jesus says to us in Matthew 28.19 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. How did the disciples preach? In the power of the Holy Spirit, who constantly led them. Acts 10, 19. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are all looking for you. Acts 13, 2. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Acts 16, 6. And they went through the regions of Pagia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Now after these events, Paul resolved in the Spirit to pass to Macedonia 
and Achia and to go to Jerusalem saying, After I've been there, I must also see Rome. That's Acts 19.21. And Acts 20.22 20, says, And now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there. It is of extreme importance to obey every prompting of the Holy Spirit. I was invited to speak at a large stadium crusade along with 15 other big-name speakers and was thrilled at being invited. But I felt that the Holy Spirit was warning me that this particular crusade would be cancelled. But so wanting to go, I still booked the tickets anyway. The crusade was cancelled and I repented seriously but still had to endure the difficulties that came out of the disobedience. I hope I will never repeat such a mistake in the future. So how should we preach? Also in the power of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel was the first to have prophesied this in Ezekiel 11, 19 to 20. And I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes, keep my rules and obey them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. It is the Holy Spirit who changes us. Acts 5, 32 And we are all witnesses to these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. And obedience to the Holy Spirit enables us to do God's work. Acts 6, 3 Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom, and I will appoint to this duty. Obedience comes when we are full of the Holy Spirit, And the result of this is found in the next verse of miracles and healings in Acts 3, 6. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. When we are full of the Holy Spirit and obedient, we also become into his protection. Mark 13, 11. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say what is ever given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. When we are totally led by the Holy Spirit, we will hear the Lord's voice more and more easily. And this will give us faith to do what he asks us to do. When I hear his voice to call up a certain person for prayer, it gives me the faith that this person will definitely receive healing. And I tell them, I then pray and simply watch the Lord do the healing. And this raises faith in the others to also receive healing. The healing miracles proclaim to the people that Jesus is truly alive. And as a result, many receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior.